wintertime RV living. We're going to talk about some tips and tricks on how to stay warm. So stick around. Is that how you stay warm in the RV, buddy? Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Wait. Today we're gonna to talk about wintering in the RV and some tips and tricks to help you stay warm. Now, the number one most important tip, don't do it. Don't winter in the RV. Hey, it's got wheels for a reason. Take it south, go where it's nice and warm. That's what we usually do. Normally this time of year, we would be down in Texas enjoying the sun. But this year we find ourselves in North Georgia up in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Not the coldest environment. We're not exactly in Maine or Idaho wintering here, but the nights still go down into the 20s. So we have to take certain measures to well stay warm inside these RVs. You know, these things say they're four seasons. That doesn't really mean much when the wall is, you know, two inches thick. It's a whole nother animal wintering in RV versus living in these things in the nice sunny weather. Let's go ahead and jump into it and we'll get going. Okay, the first thing we're going to touch base on and talk about is water. It's probably the most important thing when RVing in the wintertime because one, well, you need it. And number two, it's kind of the biggest pain in the butt when it gets cold out. So you got a few different options here. Now, if you're just kind of mobile and you're moving around every few days or you just set up somewhere for a night or two or even maybe a week, and you're going to have that temperatures drop below freezing, say for that week or so, most campgrounds are not going to be winterized as far as the water pipe coming out of the ground. So what this means for you is you're going to have to go ahead and usually shut their water off at the source. This is usually required by most campgrounds when it gets 36 or below. But what you're going to want to go ahead and do before you do that is fill up your fresh water tank and you're going to have to run off your pump slash, you know, basically dry camp. For a lot of people, if you don't do dry camping or boondocking, you know, you may never even use your pump which can also be a mistake. You do want to actually run your pump maybe once a week and maybe use it for a few days, even in sunny conditions, this and that, because you want to exercise that water pump. These water pumps are actually known to dry up and stop working if you never use them. So even in uh, the middle of summertime and when we've got full hookups, every once in a while, we switch over to our water pump for two or three days just to keep using that pump. Now I have a whole video where I go into an explanation of troubleshooting your water pump and problems that arise pretty much from when you don't use it. And I'll put a link to that up here if you wanna go check it out if you're having water pump issues. But back to the issue at hand, go ahead and fill up your fresh water tank if you know freezing temperatures are coming. Disconnect your water hoses and run off your water pump just at nighttime when the temperatures are below freezing. If in the daytime it gets back to warm temperatures, you can go ahead and hook back up to city water if you want. And another thing you wanna do is make sure you turn on those tank heaters for your gray tank, black tank, and fresh water tank if they're gonna be closed and you're gonna have liquid in them because you don't want those freezing up. Now, if you're stationary and you're gonna be set up somewhere for a couple weeks, a month, or the whole winter season, you're probably going to want to get a heated water hose. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. These heated water hoses have a real bad reputation of not lasting too long. And I'll tell you firsthand, this happened to us. We got a heated water hose in Idaho, it worked for a little while. We used it last winter in Kentucky, um, maybe a week or so at a time. So we didn't even get to a whole season of using it. Went to hook it back up this year. Sure enough, it had a leak. It had some pinhole leaks. This seems to be a common issue with these. If you read reviews, whether you get a $100 one or maybe up to $200, $250 heated hose, these are not cheap. So when I bought one, I said, I'm going to go ahead and just get a cheap one because even the more expensive ones had a lot of bad reviews as well. So I figure if I'm going to invest in one, I'd rather just get the cheapest one if they're all going to crap out anyways. And sure enough, uh, mine did. But what I did do is I went ahead and cut the uh, protective sheath off of it and I removed the heating element, which was still good. I tried to uh, get some water tape and fix the holes, but there was so much pressure no matter how much I taped up that hose, it was still leaking and I had to pretty much scrap it. So as you can see here, I'm gonna make my own water hose. So the first thing you're gonna need is a heating element. And since I'm scrapping this hose, the hose is bad, but the heating element's not. So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna use this right here. I'm just gonna cut away the sheath, pull this out of here and reuse this. You can get these on Home Depot, um, Lowe's, Amazon. I'll put some links down below. Again, I'm just gonna repurpose this one right here. Here's the thermostat, it still works, plug it in, make sure it still works. 
Uh, a new water hose, it's about a 10 foot section. You can make this as long as you want. You're gonna need some pipe wrap insulation tape and some foam pipe insulation. And that should be everything you need to make a good heated water hose. I'm gonna take that heating element, I'm gonna wrap it around the hose here, just tape it off in a few spots to hold it in place. Next, we're gonna take the hose and we're gonna tuck it right into this foam pipe insulation right here. And make sure you leave some room for that thermostat to stick out though so it's not caught up inside here. As you can see, the hose just tucks in there real nice and easy. Again, depending on how long you want to make your hose, how long you need the hose. And you just pull back on this plastic and it's going to reveal these two sticky edges and you're just going to firmly press this together to seal up that foam. Once you have that hose all tucked in there nice and neat, we're going to take the pipe wrap insulation tape. We're going to go ahead and start taping this hose up here. And this is just an extra layer to keep water out and keep things a little bit nicer and toastier inside there. Again, this campsite is nice because the water pipe is buried underneath the ground, so all I have to do is pack some insulation around here where you turn the water on to keep that a little bit warm. Again, keep that thermostat out in the elements so it triggers and comes on when it gets to about 45 degrees or so. I believe that's when these kick on. And these don't get too hot. They just get warm enough to keep that water from freezing up. And I will cover this with a bucket or something just to keep water from getting down there and you don't want all that insulation to get wet. You can see I got the hose coming right up inside my wet bay here, right to a Y splitter. And from that Y splitter, I have my black flush hooked up so I can just switch that on when I need to easily and my water, uh, city water going right in there. So it's a nice, easy setup. Everything will stay warm in here. This area of the wet bay is obviously heated, so you don't have to worry about that. And you just plug it in right up here and should be all set and good to go. Again, you can make this as long as you need. And secure, and that's what I'm gonna use this year. And we're gonna see how well that lasts. Now, I will tell you right now, I haven't made one of these before. I haven't used it before. I'm hoping this works out. And I will put down in the comments down below, um, depending on when this video is posted or when you're watching this, how well that heated hose has worked out. Now, remember, a heated water hose is only as good as the campground's uh, water pipe coming out of the ground. So if you don't insulate that and take care of that, the heated water hose doesn't matter because their pipe is gonna freeze up if you leave it on 24 seven. You're gonna have to actually go out to the Home Depot or Lowe's. You're gonna have to get some, some pipe foam, some insulated pipe foam to wrap around this, some heated tape. Um, you're gonna have to put like a bucket or a cover on top of it to keep it all dry. There's a few different things you can do, but you're gonna have to make sure you take care of that first before you even get to your heated water hose. You also usually wanna keep your Tanks closed, you always want to keep your black tank closed, but you usually want to keep your gray tanks closed. That way they're not going into your sewer pipe the whole time and make sure you don't have any bins or kinks or P-traps that some people put outside because if you have a P-trap in your sewer hose and that's filled with water and it freezes up when you go to empty your tank, well, nothing's going to flow through that. So something to think about. Just remember that any residual water that you do have in your sewer hose will freeze up so you want to make sure that you don't have any dips or anything or you know it's totally going to freeze up and you're not going to be able to get any more liquids past there so something to uh think about and lastly if your rv comes with tank heaters don't forget to put those on at night you can flip them on you can pretty much leave them on 24 7 if you want they do have thermostats on them so they only come on when it gets so cold tank heaters come on and it keeps it just warm enough to keep anything from freezing inside your tanks and then, of course, one of the more difficult things if you're full-time RVing in the winter, you're stationary and you have a heated water hose hookup um, is flushing your black tank. So try to keep a Y splitter somewhere inside the bay here where it's heated. You, anything that you have outside of the camper, any kind of filters or Y splitters, you're going to have to bring all that stuff in. Water regulators, you don't want any of that stuff left outside. That stuff will freeze and totally get ruined. You can't have a water filter, an inline uh, water filter outside. So you want to try to either put your water filters in here. You know, we run a water softener. We also cannot leave that outside in the cold. So we have to bring that in. So really the only thing you want, you basically want that heated water hose running right up inside of the water bay. And from there, you can have a Y splitter. That way you can easily connect a short hose to your black flush or whatever you want to do. And I do recommend getting some of these quick connects so you can do that pr uh, process easily without having to get wrenches and this and that. That way you can just switch from one to the other. Okay, let's move along and talk about skirting. Okay, now, now in case you don't know what I'm talking about when I say skirting, I'm talking about sealing up the bottom of your RV all the way around so none of that cold air gets underneath the RV and comes up. And I'm sure you've probably seen this on some RVs before. Sometimes you can get the professional skirting done. I'm not too sure how much that costs. I think it's pretty expensive. They're gonna come along and install, well, you can install it or I guess you could have somebody install it. You're gonna have the snap buttons going all the way around your RV. 
And it's going to be basically like a, you know, a plastic um, canvas that basically goes all the way around and just keeps that underbelly a little bit warm. You don't get the cold drafts coming up there because, I mean, that's where all the cold air comes up underneath your camper. If you don't want to go the professional route of getting the professional skirting done, you can do the DIY project. You go to Home Depot, Lowe's, and you just get some of that foam board. And they have some different R values on them. And all you do is cut that stuff to fit underneath the camper. And you just get some tape and you just tape it up all the way around. Pretty easy. It's not a hard project. It definitely makes a huge difference on how warm that RV is going to stay and how much propane you're going to go through. Now, speaking of propane, let's go ahead and get into that and jump into some ways that you can save some money with propane and what you need to do if you're going to be RVing in the wintertime and how to stay warm with the propane. Uh. Okay, propane. Your propane furnace is going to be your primary source of heat in almost all RVs. You can have different styles, tanks, 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pounds. We have two 30 pounds, one on each side. Uh, if we wanted to upgrade, we could actually fit a 40 pound tank inside of here. The bigger tank you have, just the less often you have to go and fill these things up. I would say when it's really cold, we were in Idaho one time, snow on the ground, that kind of cold constant. We would go through these maybe about every three days right now with these temperatures. I'd say we're going through the two 30 pound tanks about maybe every week or so. And again, this is going to factor into what do you like to set your thermostat at? How warm do you want it to be? A lot of times we usually have our thermostat inside at nighttime set to 64. We'll bump it up a little bit when we wake up in the morning, but we also supplement the heat with a space heater and the electric fireplace. Now, what is more cost effective? Well, if you're staying somewhere where you're not getting charged for the electric bill, get those space heaters, run the electric fireplace as much as you can because you're not paying the electric bill. Now, it's not that big of a deal in the summertime kind of monitoring how much propane you have if you're just randomly using it for cooking. And a few times on a chilly night, you're really not using your tanks that much. But once wintertime comes and you are using these a lot, I would recommend these right here. These are the Mopeka sensors. And we keep these on the bottom of our tank. And we have a whole video about these things. I'll put a link up to that so you guys can go check out that video if you want to. But these are great because this links up via Bluetooth. This is basically sends a sonar signal up through the bottom of the tank. And it'll actually tell you a percentage of how full these tanks are and how much you got left. Because, well, you don't want to run out in the middle of the night. And it is nice to know when you're down to 20% or so. And you can go get them filled up or if you need to switch over to the other tank and this and that. So if you guys haven't seen these, we've been pretty happy with these. The batteries, I just recently changed these out. So they lasted about a year and a half until I had to change the batteries out. But other than that, they're really nice. They go right to your phone. It can give you a warning. You can set it at a certain limit. Hey, when I'm down to 15%, notify me, this and that. Again, go check these out. To me, it's kind of a must have if you're gonna be RVing in the winter time and you're constantly using propane. Now, option number two, if you're gonna be stationary, and if the campground allows it, uh, we cannot do it here, but over at our other site down the road, which Megan's parents are staying on, they opted for a big propane tank. You can usually contact one of the propane companies within your area. They will come out and deliver a, you know, you've seen 150, 300 gallon tank, set up next to your RV. They will run the line directly into your camper for you. And then they will periodically come and fill that tank up. It just depends on the company. Some companies, they will come out, uh, you know, every month and just fill it up. Some other companies will come out when you contact them. It just depends. But that is a really great way to go. If you're going to be in an extremely cold climate and you're not going to be moving for a long time, getting the big propane tank is definitely the way to go. And I will say that the colder it gets, uh, the less these will perform at their highest optimal performance. So if you can actually keep your tanks a little bit warmer in extremely cold conditions, you're going to get a longer life out of these. You're going to, it's going to last longer for you. And one way you can do that, you can actually put a drop light up in here to keep this area a little bit warmer, have the light right on here. They have propane tank, like uh, basically uh, these blankets and wraps that you can put around in, around these tanks. I've never really looked into it too much because we just haven't been in that cold of an environment. But again, if you are going to be in an extremely cold environment, it's definitely worth figuring out how to insulate these propane tanks or keep it warmer in here. The warmer these tanks are, the longer they're going to last, the better they're going to perform. So, okay guys, now that we're inside, we're nice and warm. 
Let's talk about a couple ways to add some heat to the RV that is not using your RV propane furnace or basically some ways to add some heat, supplement some heat. And the number one way, the obvious way would be some space heaters. We run a space heater in our bedroom. It's very nice, we love it. It does a great job. It's got a lot of safety features, which is important. Always remember that. Don't leave the space heaters leaving if you ever leave the RV. Don't plug them into an extension cord. A lot of the extension cords are not made to have a high wattage uh, space heater like that plugged into them and they can melt that. So just always keep safety in mind, what's touching it, put it in a safe spot, kids, all that kind of stuff. Just you know, touch base on that. But space heaters are an excellent way to supplement and add some heat to the RV, as well as the RV fireplace. Most RVs nowadays just seem to have fireplaces. Uh, they don't put off tons of heat, but they do definitely take off the chill, and if you run it long enough, it, it actually heats up pretty well. If you're not paying that electric bill at the campground, you may just wanna go full on space heaters and use that and not even touch your propane. Another way to add heat to RVs would be a heat pump. Some RVs in the AC units have built-in heat pumps if they don't have a built-in heat pump, you can actually easily add a heat pump to them. They're usually already wired for it. It's a simple connection to add a heat pump. And then on your thermostat, you can run electric heat from your actual AC units. You're not running off propane, but you're gonna be running electric heat. Now, I've never used those. From what I've talked to people, they seem to be good up until about maybe 40, 45 degrees, and then they just don't seem to be that effective from what I've been told. So if you are camping, full time in a deep winter cold climate area. It doesn't seem like it's a very good way to heat, like they're not that effective at that kind of temperatures. But again, if you have the heat pumps and you're not paying the electric bill, uh, that sounds like a great way to take the chill off in the camper if you're just kind of having cold weeks here and there. Now there is one myth out there I wanna to touch base about using your RV propane furnace, that it creates condensation inside the camper. Well, that's not actually true. The propane furnace does not create any sort of extra condensation inside the RV. Any condensation that it produces actually vents outside the RV. But what's going to happen is in your RV, as the temperatures heat up and you have cold walls and cold windows, they are going to build up moisture, especially on the windows. Now, the biggest thing you can do to combat this is have a couple of dehumidifiers running. Dehumidifiers are gonna circulate the air, gonna suck up all the moisture in the air. And a lot of that moisture is just gonna come from you breathing. Just as if you were sitting in a cold car and you had a few people in that car and everyone's breathing and hot breath, it's gonna build up and it's gonna create a foggy, like, you know, moisture on the windows. Same thing in your RV. Uh, any kind of heat source, especially running the oven or the propane stove, Creating that heat is going to fog up your windows, but running dehumidifiers is gonna help 24 seven. You don't want mold building up behind your couches and on walls where it may be cold and that will happen, but the dehumidifiers cut back on that. Not only that, opening and cracking a window from time to time or running your vent fan, especially when cooking. I know it seems a little counterintuitive. You're kind of opening a fan and sucking the air out, sucking the heat out but it's okay to, you wanna let that fresh air in, you gotta recirculate and get the fresh air in and get the old air out to reduce that condensation and moisture buildup in the RV. So if you are gonna use the propane stove a lot or oven, definitely recommend opening your hood vent and letting that fresh air circulate. That's gonna reduce the condensation that builds up in your RV. But running dehumidifiers, some damp rid, we have all these strategically located throughout our camper. We have them under our bed, in our closets, in our pantry. We actually run three dehumidifiers because we do not want things getting wet. Water is a camper's enemy. We know this, mold, mildew, all that stuff builds up. We've never had a problem with that. So definitely looking into doing that. Another thing that's gonna help with that is Reflectix. Now some people will totally Reflectix every single window they have in their camper. This is an only good way for the summertime. Most of us know the trick for the summertime to reflect the heat and keep the heat out of the camper but you can also use Reflectix on your window to keep that cold out. If you ever go put your hand by the windows in the RV, it's extremely cold, the cold air comes in. One way we stop that is a lot of times we'll keep those blinds closed as much as we can to just kind of keep that cold air from coming in. Now, we don't like to live in a cave. I wanna see the sunshine. I wanna see what it looks like outside. I don't wanna just live in a completely dark camper with the blinds closed and all the windows boarded up with Reflectix. 
but we do put a reflectix on a few of the windows that we just don't open that much anyways mainly up by our bedroom uh, the bed windows where you can really feel that cold air coming in at night anyways and we really don't open those blinds too often so by putting reflectix up you're going to keep that cold from really just coming in those windows that's going to totally help out with that and just insulate the camper a little bit more yes four seasons this and that but let's be honest these walls and most rvs are two inch thick max and they're just filmed with like a vacuum sealed styrofoam they're really not doing that much something else we do is we use foam backer rod to fill in any gaps sometimes underneath our slide outs the bigger higher elevated slide outs and sometimes the side of the slide outs we use a foam backer rod which is usually meant for filling in gaps in concrete it's just a polyurethane foam we have a full video of that up here not only does it keep the drafts out keep the cold air out but it also protects legos which we know all about rocks anything from getting underneath your slide out you got to put your slide out in you damage your floors so by putting that foam backer rod underneath uh the slide outs not only are you keeping that draft that you can feel from underneath those slide outs but you're also saving uh the chance of something getting wedged under there and damaging your floor another good tip another video you can go check out it's a short one just on how we use the foam backer rod in certain areas to reduce drafts and now i hope this goes without saying but don't use your oven, your propane oven as a heat source. Um, that's, I don't even want to get into the fire hazards and problems that could cause, but uh, that's just not a good idea. So don't use your stove or your oven as a heat supplement. That is not a good idea. Just for anybody out there who um, may, may think that's a good idea, just, yeah, just don't do that. And another quick and easy tip is just have some rugs down on these floors. Most of these RVs are not carpeted nowadays. Um, so putting some rugs down just kind of helps out with that coldness on the feet, helps with the cold coming up to the bottom of the camper, especially if you haven't skirted it. Now, if you got a fancy camper, you may have heated floors. I've seen a couple of those, and that's a really nice feature. Anytime you have anything with a heated floor in the bathroom or throughout the camper, that's going to help out a lot. But if not, put some uh, you know runners down the hallway, put some rugs down in the room, and that's just going to help reduce that coldness coming up through those hard floors. And if you guys have any ideas or anything I didn't touch base on or talk about today on how to stay warmer while RVing in the wintertime, hey, comment down below. Let me know because I want to hear about it because I don't like being cold and anything you can come up with. If I haven't thought about it, again, comment, let me know. I'll be glad to hear it. So besides keeping a couple extra blankets around the house, maybe staying a little bit more bundled up, again, hey, you're living in a camper it's not a perfect world it's not a house it's not going to be insulated as much it's not going to hold heat as much it's just nothing you can do about it but follow some of these tips do some of these practices will help you keep you a little bit warmer hopefully reduce your propane cost or energy cost a little bit and try to stay a little bit warmer if you're RVing in the winter time or like i said in the beginning just don't do it that's what florida and texas are for okay it's got wheels move it but seriously i understand sometimes we can't do it and people have to work and people have to live here for certain reasons. You gotta visit family. But if you do, do your best. Stay warm out there. And as always, hey, don't let it stop you from getting out there and starting a full time RV adventure because why wait? We'll see you guys next time.